All right, here's a quick introduction to optimization, um, the last topic that we'll have in our Calc 1 class. The basic idea here is there are word problems um, where there is a function in the problem that we're trying to optimize, make as big as possible or make as small as possible. And as you know from previous sections in our book, um, these maximum and minimum values happen at critical points or endpoints. And critical points come in two flavors, when the first derivative equals zero or when the first derivative is undefined. Um, the nice thing that I'm going to do in our optimization is I'm always going to make the maximum and minimum values occur at critical points, not at endpoints. Furthermore, um, they, these critical values will always be the type where the first derivative equals zero, not where the first derivative is undefined. So it's nice to know all the theory in the previous sections, but for this, all we'll have to do is figure out the first derivative of the function that's given, set it equal to zero, solve, and we'll have our answer. So with that being said, let's actually do a couple of them. Um, in this first example, I want to build a rectangular yard. All right, so often it helps to have a picture here. What I was going for is I kind of have a house here, and I'm going to build this yard. I don't know, maybe it looks something like this. Um, but I'm really only building three sides of the yard because the fourth side is going to be my house. And I want the area of this yard to be 800 square feet. Um, so in order to use the least amount of material possible, what dimension should the yard be? Okay, so in each of these problems, you're going to be looking for two things. You're going to be looking for a function, specifically a function that you're going to try to optimize. To optimize. And you're going to be looking for a constraint. And the reason you'll need a constraint is because this function that you're going to try to optimize will have two variables, or at least two variables in it. Um, and we only know how to take the derivative when we have one variable. So we'll use the constraint to solve for one of the variables in terms of the other and come up with the one variable function. Okay, so I like to start by finding the function that we're going to try to optimize because there's some key words that will help you determine what the function is. Since we're trying to optimize it, we're trying to figure out when it's as big as possible or as small as possible. So you're looking for words like biggest, smallest, least, uh, most, those type things. So as you read through here, you see that it says we want to use the least amount of material possible. That's key. Least is the big word that, for me, helps me realize that we're talking about the function here. So the material I'm going to use is kind of this area of the fence. If I call, I don't know, maybe this L and this W for length and width, sure. Then the material is going to be used up here, here, and here. So you can kind of think about the perimeter of the yard as the function that I want to optimize. So to write it in function notation, I'm going to say P of L comma W. I know this looks really weird. I'll explain it. Don't worry. Equals 2L plus W. OK, what I'm getting at here, first of all, is I really want to emphasize that I have a function. right? The perimeter of the yard, the area around these three sides, um, depends. It depends on what L is and what W is. But for any values of L and W, it's equal to this, 2L plus W. 2L because I have an L here and an L here, but only one W because where the other W will be, I actually have a house. So this is the function that I want to optimize. This is the thing that I'm going to take the first derivative of, set equal to 0, and solve to finish the problem. Unfortunately, I can't do that right now because it's got two variables, L comma W. That's weird. We haven't seen anything like that so far. So what we're going to have to do is figure out our constraint. Um, I usually find it by kind of a process of elimination. Well, I already used this part. What's the info in here that I haven't used? Well, let's see. i got a rectangular yard that has to have an area of 800 square feet. So the area of a rectangle is length times width. So the area, how about L times W, has to be equal to 800. Um, this is a constraint. It's an equation, unlike over here where I have a function. And this equation will relate together the two variables that show up in my function. And why that's really important is because I can now solve this equation for one of my variables. It doesn't matter which one, whichever one you want. Uh, maybe I'll solve it for w. The way I'd solve this for w is I'd divide both sides by l. If you decide to solve for l and divide both sides by w, totally fine. You'll get the same answer. Since I know that W is 800 over L, I can then go back over here and say, well, let's see, my perimeter was 2L plus W, but W is 800 over L, so really my perimeter 
is 2L plus 800 over L. The advantage of this form right here is it only has one variable. So I can say the perimeter of function where L is the variable is equal to this. I now have a function that's only one variable so I can deal with it. I want to figure out when the perimeter is as small as possible. The smallest point possible will be at a critical value. Um, to figure out a critical value, I'm going to take the derivative Um, I don't know, you might be able to just look at this and tell what the derivative is. If not, it might help you to say, well, if I'm dividing by L, that's really times L to the negative 1 power. So for the derivative, it's just 2 minus 800 L to the negative 2. Um, I thought it was easier to take the derivative of it in this form. If you want to leave it in this form and, I don't know, use the quotient rule or something, go for it. It doesn't matter. You get the same answer. Get here for the derivative. To optimize, I want to set my derivative equal to zero. So I'm going to take this, maybe time to switch colors. I'm going to take this derivative, 2 minus 800 L to the negative 2, and set it equal to zero. Uh, well, I could add 800 L to the negative 2 to both sides of the equation. Um, I want to solve for, yeah, okay, let's do it that way. Um, I want to solve for L. I don't like having L to a negative exponent. That's kind of weird. I'm going to multiply both sides of the equation by L squared. That'll get me over to here. Um, if you have trouble seeing going from this line to this line, think about this as 800 divided by L squared. I multiply both sides by L squared I got here. Uh, now divide both sides by 2, and you get L squared equals 400. So therefore, L is equal to, if I take the square root of both sides of the equation, plus or minus 20. Um, negative 20 doesn't really make sense in this context. I can't have a length of negative 20. Um, so where do I go? Maybe up here. So L equals 20. That's the only one that makes sense. And if I know L equals 20, I know that W is equal to 800 over L. That's using this equation right here. Um, so W is equal to 40. So since it asked for the dimensions, be careful on these problems too. Make sure you're answering what it's asking for. What dimension should the yard be? It should be 20 by 40. Doesn't matter if you say what you're calling L and what you're calling W. What dimension should the yard be? It should be 20 by 40 feet if you really want to care about units, but I don't. Um, the next problem is going to look really similar to this one, but I think if the there's a slight difference and it'll completely change the way we're going to do it. And I think compare, having these two one after another really helps you understand the subtleties and the differences between functions and constraints. So on this next problem here, maybe I'll keep them both on the same page. It's very similar, same picture. I still got my house, I'm still making a yard. The difference now is they tell me what the perimeter is. It says I have 400 feet of material to use. Right before, that was the thing I wanted to optimize. Right, I wanted to figure out what the dimension. Actually, I didn't know what the perimeter was going in. Now I do know what the perimeter is going in. Um, up here, I didn't know, or I did know what the area should be. It's 800 square feet down here. It's asking me what is the largest possible yard I can fence. It's asking me to optimize the area. So when you read down here, where we want to find our function. Well, the largest possible, remember you're looking for those optimized words, biggest, smallest, largest, least, those type things. Largest possible yard, um, well, the area as a function of length and width is just equal to length times width. Right? If you want the area of a rectangle, it's length times the width. Um, I don't know what the area is down here. I'm trying to make that area as large as possible, but I don't know what it is. This is my function. This is the thing I'm going to take the derivative of. Can't do it immediately because it has two variables. I sure hope there's some sort of constraint that relates together those two variables. Well, what else is there in the problem? I have 400 feet of material. Okay, that means I have 400 feet to use here, here, and here. What that means is that 2L plus W must be equal to 400. In a sense, the function and the constraint have kind of switched. Right, before the area was the constraint, now the area is the function. Before the perimeter was the function, now the perimeter is the constraint. Constraint. Good enough. 
Um, so now I'll do the exact same thing. I'll say, okay, I wanna take the derivative of this guy, but I can't because it has two variables. So I'll solve this equation for one of the two variables. W looks pretty easy to solve for. Just subtract two L from both sides of the equation. And then take that and put it over here. Say, all right, I knew area as a function of length and width, but that didn't really help me. I want area just as a function of one variable, just a function of the variable L. Well, then it's L times, and instead of writing W for width, I'll write 400 minus 2L, because in my constraint, I figured out that W was equal to 400 minus 2L. What I now have here is a one variable function. Take the derivative, set it equal to zero, solve, you'll be good. Um, taking the derivative of this the way it's written, I mean, you could do it. I guess you'd use the product rule, most likely. I prefer to do a little bit of algebra first. Take this L and distribute it through to get 400L minus 2L squared. Because I think that makes it easier to take the derivative. But you do your calculus how you want. I'll do my calculus how I want. Uh, taking the derivative here using the power rule you get here. Relatively straightforward. Um, once you have the derivative... We're kind of at this stage right here. I want to find the critical value because that's how I optimize. The optimal points will happen at my critical values. So to figure out the critical values, I take my first derivative and set it equal to zero. I say 400 minus 4L, uh, does not say 4L, but this does, equals zero. Set your first derivative equal to zero and solve. Add 4L to both sides. Man, hard to write. And divide both sides by four and you get that L equals 100. So what that's saying is the optimal yard, and by optimal, I mean the largest yard possible. L in my picture, this thing right here, must be equal to 100. So is that my answer? It's not because the question is asking me, what is the largest possible yard I can fence? What is the area? I'm gonna write that even more explicitly. That's kind of implied already, I think. What is the area of the largest possible yard I can fence? It's asking me for the area. Well, over here, I have area as a function of L. Right? My area changes depending on what L is, but I just figured out that the optimal L was 100. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say A of 100 will give me the area when L equals 100. That's 400 times 100 minus two times 100 squared. Uh, that's what, four with four zeros after it? A big yard. Um, and this is two with four zeros after it. It looks like the area of the largest possible yard is 20,000, whatever the hell my units are, square feet, I guess, in this case. That would be the answer. Um, realistically, if this was a test and you told me, well, L was 100, and maybe even took it a step further and said, well, if L is 100, W is 400 minus 200. W is 200. If you said the dimensions of the largest possible yard are 100 by 200, I'd be pretty happy. But that's not what the question is asking. I mean, maybe I'd even give you full credit, but at the very least, I'd give you 9 out of 10. It's asking me for the area. Well, the area of a yard that is 100 by 200 is 20,000 square feet. Uh, so that's all I got on this. Uh, if you really, the thing that I was trying to get people to understand here is that in each of these optimization problems, there's gonna be a function and a constraint. And really the hardest part of the problem is identifying those. Your function will typically have more than one variable. It's the thing you're trying to optimize. So again, look for keywords like least amount of or largest possible, that kind of stuff. Come up with your function, allow yourself to use two variables, that's fine, because your constraint will relate together those two variables. So you use your constraint to solve for one of the two variables and get yourself a one variable function. Once you have your function, I mean, you're almost home free, it's pretty easy at that point. Take the derivative, typically these derivatives are pretty easy, not always, but easier than some of the stuff we've done with crazy chain rules and stuff. Take the derivative, set it equal to zero. Realize that you're just finding a critical value so really, you should compare that critical value to the endpoints. Make sure that that critical value is a local maximum or a local minimum, depending on what the problem's asking for. Uh, but know that in these problems, I'm always going to make the there only be one critical value, and that critical value will be the right answer. So if you kind of understand how you're cheating a little bit, that's good. 
Um, and then that gets you the answer. Oh, and make sure that your answer, what you solve for, is actually what they're asking you for. You know, sometimes you have to plug that back in somewhere to figure out what the question is actually asking for. So there you go. There's a little introduction to optimization all in this video here.